All right, I'm in the black truck. I'm loaded up with a Dirty Max. Tell me what you think about this. I put the key in the ignition and watch what happens. All right, and now I try and start it. Not even trying to start. Nothing. Start. It wasn't overheating. Nothing happened crazy. It just driving along and it just shut off on me. Uh, in that spot. We have a 2021 Ford F600 Super Duty. It's got a 6.7. It's got a, a issue with where you put the key in the ignition. If you guys watch the dashboard, there we go. Put the key in, odometer goes to all blanks. And then all of a sudden it starts throwing all these different crazy codes. Says it's overheating. It's been sitting here for two days, and uh, there's no way it's overheating. But it says it's out of fuel. It's it's just literally throwing all these different codes. And then when I try to hit the key, you'll see no crank, no start. All right. So started doing some homework. Come to find out that these Fords, um, they have an issue with. There's actually a service bulletin on them but there's a fuse box back here behind this battery and they say if the lid is off or it's not sealed correctly in any which way this will be a common problem because water will go down right here and go down in it and so i popped my hood lord behold my lid is missing and so i was like well I guess that's gonna be what we're gonna have to figure out. We're gonna have to pull this out. Um, if you replace it, you they sell them. This is the battery junction box, short BJB. Um, you see where it says DAG, diesel. Uh, the D is for diesel. So that's your same part number. If you get a GAG, that's a gas one. You don't want that fuse box because that main 50 amp fuse is going to not be there if you don't have that and you put a gas one in here you'll always have a check engine light and it won't it won't uh think properly so we're going to take this battery out get that out of the way get the battery box out of the way and we'll pull that fuse block out and uh see if we can find any water intrusions in it all right so we got the battery out now we're going to have to pull these battery tray bolts out Let's see, I wonder if there's any more. Oh yeah, one on the side, right there. And I can't see right now, but there's probably one down there. I'll tell you, I'll show you guys when I get it out. Yeah, then you gotta push the tabs on these. Joe's trying to figure out this one, but I was just trying to do it with one hand. So looks like push that one. So I got it out. There is definitely another bolt. One right there, one there. It's a 13 millimeter. They just come out. And then you pop these little tabs off of here and one off of there. Now I've got clear access to it. It's pretty simple. And then you just got the one 10 millimeter down there. Let's get that off. careful not to drop the nut out there. and then it's got like a little wire which you want to lift it up out of the way sorry about my big fat hands there we go just pop that off move that out of the way there you go 
And then you're gonna wanna take these seven millimeters out, but you gotta run them down kind of far to push, you gotta push the big square plugs on the back of the fuse block down with these, cause these are what hold them in. Yeah, so I loosen this one just a little bit. It started to get a little tight and then you feel it starting to walk up. And I get that one. You hear it get tight. And you go until it walks all the way up. But usually most people will hear that snug and they'll be like, oh, it's done. And I would have too, if I didn't already watch a video on how to do this. Well, yeah, you just take those out, set them right there. And then give this a little, little tuggy tug. Looks like I've got a tab here and one back there. And uh, then it should come right out. Something I've been told, which makes plenty of sense, is that all these cabin chassis trucks, you know, 450, 550, 600, you know, the fact the second that they roll off the factory floor as a cabin chassis, they're going to go to a builder and they're going to mess with the upfitters. So after the factory, about 12 people or more, maybe, I don't know, they're going to, yeah, that should work. Uh, they're going to dig in the fuse box. They're going to open the lid and maybe mess up the tabs or the legs. They're going to add this aftermarket wiring. I bought this truck brand new. There's never been anybody in here digging around. But that doesn't mean that somebody didn't mess with it after it rolled off of Ford's factory. So you see these wires, somebody's been in here doing something, but I've never had anybody personally do anything. And I bought this truck with 299 miles on it and uh, I had bought it straight from a builder. So now who knows where the lid is? I've never seen the lid. I know it doesn't have a diagram on it, but we're almost about ready to get it out. I just popped this little tab right here and it came free. And I, there's one on the back that's kind of a pain in the ass to get to. Oh, oh I don't know what's holding it in. Something's holding it. Oh, maybe it's still the plug. Yeah, the plug is still attached. So gotta be real careful of that, not to mess up those tabs and prongs. All right, so now I got these seven millimeters loose i had originally pulled them out thinking that i did enough but now i what i did was the plug on the bottom is held in by these but usually these push it away to un unhook it from the bottom of the fuse box so i had to apply pressure pushing down on the top of the ratchet to and then all of a sudden i felt it pop and it went ahead and i'm pretty sure it pushed the big plug off the bottom and now this is loose and it's not attached to anything but it's not coming out of the box so i think that's good i'll have to push the tab on the back of the fuse box you'll need a shorter flathead let me see let me grab one right here see if i can't get that one to pop loose. Oop, drop the camera. Okay, let me try it. So, I don't really have a, another short one, but there's a little tab in the back that's kind of hard to get to. I'm gonna pause it for a second. Yeah, so once it pops free, you just put the little tab in there like that and then lift it up. It should come right out. I'm gonna set this down. So I don't know how to, there we go, popped up. I should be able to come off, oh, I think so. I think we got it. Yes, sir. And there we go. So you want those bolts to stay in there and hold those big plugs out of the way. They're kind of a pain in the butt. So what I did was I wedged something. I actually put my I put my other gun on top of it to try and push it down and it worked pretty good but now that i have it out i'm gonna look for some water intrusion and see if i can see any visual signs that it was wet 
because I'm hoping that I can see some visual signs. If I see those, oh, bingo. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna zoom in some. There's some corrosion in there. That's a good sign. You know, the first thing you gotta do is be able to identify the issue. And that's definitely an issue. So that's good. I think that this is the actual problem. So another thing I noticed is there's some, some crud and corrosion here on one of the plugs that was on that side. So I'm going to assume that that's really what was causing my issue. Considering all of the forums and write-ups and service bulletins and stuff like that that I find on this truck, and especially it being a known issue for if the lid is off, and then we just had a major rain the other day, and it, this little ramp here, it's kind of like a freaking water slide, goes right in there. Go figure it's on this side of it and not back there. So, I mean, I'm 90% sure we figure this out. It's time to get a new one. Yeah, there we go. You can see a lot of water damage. That's actually a good sign, man. I love when you can find evidence of a, of stuff when you're trying to diagnose and you're kind of shooting in the dark. You're just hoping it's the best. Like, it's obvious there's a water, uh, water damage here. So, great news. I notice all the ones that I keep finding that D right there, 14D. I don't find one that says 14D, it says 14A. And I'm not 100% sure that that's gonna be the same. I finally got this new box. I had to order it, it took a couple days to come in. Got a brand new one though. There we go. Got the old one right here. We'll see what the part number is different. So we've got, oh yeah, same part number. 14 Delta 068 DAG. Yep, there we go. And remember we've got the intrusions on this bad boy or the corrosion, water corrosion, whatever you would like to call it. We got this brand new one. But remember guys, they don't come with a lid. The whole reason why we're in this mess is because we didn't have a lid. So make sure if you don't have a lid and you buy a new one, you need to make sure that it comes with a lid or you order a lid. So I ordered a lid and got an OEM one coming. It'll be here in a day or so. But for now, I'm gonna stick this in and see if it's the problem. Don't forget to clean off your surface, at least give it a little wipe down. And then I got some, uh, some dielectric grease. This helps with the connections and keeping stuff clean. Let's see what we get. We're gonna see if this goes in any easier than the way that it came out. Set that bad boy right on there. Well, it's clipped into place. That one started the thread. Heck yeah, that one started the thread too. Let's see what we get. Pulled it back out, I wasn't sure if it was connecting. That one back there is definitely connecting. Let's see what happens here. Maybe I can tighten that one up. Oh, 
Oh yeah. That one back there is connected all the way. Let's see what happens when I click this into place. Actually, I did not click it. Let's see if this will suck it in. Oh yeah, let's we'll see what it did. Oh, it sucked the whole box into place. All right. That one's tight. That one's tight. I'm going to hook up this red wire over here. And now that that's on there, it's just got one 10 millimeter nut. Drop it on the post. I'll use a ratchet for this, but I'll do it by finger first. Technically, since this seven and that seven, that 10 are all hooked up, the fuse block, the battery junction box is 100% installed. I just need to put a cover on it. But before I go putting this in, I'm eager to know if I hook up the power on that side, did I fix my problem? We're gonna find out right now. Just gonna hook it up right here. We got power, you heard it. Here's the moment of truth. If I turn the key, I got the, ref the reflection right there, so bear with me. But if I turn the key to the on position and the odometer reads the actual miles, this truck is gonna start. Ooh, hoo, hoo. we got fuel. Fired right up. There we go. Fuse box was definitely the problem. Getting that battery box to go back in its spot it's actually a little harder than I thought. I don't remember it being that that tough to get it out of there, but it's all good. It's back in. Goes back in the same way it came out. We got the battery all back in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, all the bolts are tight. Everything looking good. So we've got it idling. Still has a couple of lights on. I'll scan it, see what's going on, and then uh, go from there. But it's running, and it doesn't say it's overheating. The part number for the lid is right here. It comes kind of gray. It's not fully black, but I really don't care what color it is, and I'm pretty sure you guys can agree with me. We don't care what color it is, right? As long as we don't have this problem ever again. And there we have it. It's all down in there, clicked into place. No more waterfall. Also, those check engine light and those other codes that were on, they went away after moving the truck about two feet. So I'd assume that the truck just needed to start up and run. But it's all fixed. I wanted to say thank you to all of you guys that make these kind of videos. This F600 would have been a nightmare to try and figure out without the help of your other YouTubers. If you guys are able to make videos of your repairs, it helps a lot of people out, man. You never know, somebody else might be out there. It might only be one person. You might be the first one. But even if you can see a lot of videos where it shows the same fix or the same problem. If you got the time and you got the patience, just shoot a video, man. That's everybody else. Thank you to those guys that always show us how to fix these trucks. And hope you guys have a good one. Till next time. Later.